go up to Stoke now where the count's taking place in a local sports hall. They like sports halls because you can lay out all the tables in the space there and do the counting on the tables. Very efficient way of doing it. Let's hope they're efficient tonight. Jared Batten is a member of the European Parliament for UKIP. He is joining us from the count in Stoke. Now, Jared Batten, can you uh, uh, tell us uh, how is your party likely to fare tonight, this morning? Well, uh, it's a bit too early to say, Andrew. I, it's definitely a two-horse race. It's between us and Labour. Uh, and what I've been saying for the last couple of weeks is that it's either going to be, say, 1,000, 2,000 to Labour, or it's going to be a very close result, and it could go either way. Uh, and my skill can't, not in a position to say that what well, that's going to be yet. But the options you gave me there, it's either a couple of thousand to Labour or a very mm. close result. It doesn't sound that you're too confident that Mr... Paul Nuttall has pulled this off for you. Well, it's a very difficult um, task, uh, of course, uh, to win a seat like this, which has been in Labour's hands since 1950, I believe. Uh, so, you know, to win a seat from another party that's got that long established record here uh, is always going to be a difficult thing to do. And of course, we've seen this, we've seen two things in this election which have been, I think, pretty bad. The uh, Labour Party has had absolutely nothing positive to say about itself but it's attacked UKIP on a lie, which is that we want to privatise the NHS, which just isn't true, never been true, and we've had that on the doorstep. And the other thing has been the sustained character assassination by the media uh, against Paul Nuttall, or some elements of the media, uh, and that's played on the doorstep as well to a certain extent. So, there, so the, the complaints about Mr Nuttall, his um, sometime vicarious relationship with the truth, that has cut through, you think, on the doorsteps of Stoke? Uh, no, it, no, it hasn't. What, as Paul has explained this many times in the last few, couple of weeks, he was at Hillsborough, he was 12 years old, his press officer put something up on the website which he didn't check properly and, ov and obviously has over-egged the pudding a bit. Uh, and, he, uh, and when he realised that that had been happened, uh, he, he frankly admitted he'd made a mistake and he apologised for it. But that's the extent of it, Andrew. No, you know, but I, I understand that. that that was the explanation. But it's, uh, it wasn't just Hillsborough, though, that I think that did matter for a lot of people. It was also uh, the, his uh, relationship with Tranmere Rovers, which wasn't quite what he had claimed it to be and his so-called PhD, which was not a PhD. It just created a sense that he had a lot of questions to answer and I would suggest got in the way of you getting your other messages across, that, that Mr Nuttall well, turned yes, out not this... to be the candidate that you really needed if you were going to win Stoke. Well. Well, what we've had is elements of the media who don't want UKIP to win, who've worked these things up into, uh, you know, a, 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 the extent that it is far beyond their relevance or their truth, uh, and they've done a good job. They've managed to get those things on the doorstep, and uh, so people like The Guardian and Channel 4 can be proud of themselves. They've actually... Uh, done, uh, you know, done uh, the damage that they've done to UKIP is rather than actually so, reporting uh, the election campaign itself are, and the issues that matter. Are you telling me that The Guardian and Channel 4 News are big on the terrace, the backstreet terraces of Stoke? Uh, it gets into the mainstream media. It's repeat, repeated in radio programs, and you're, repeat, you know, you're talking about it tonight, Andrew. It's been talked about. Yeah, so that's well, how people they get have it. They voted may not be though, reading so The Guardian, but it filters result. down. People... People who don't read The Guardian do often see the press reviews on Sky, for example. OK. Uh, but it seems to me, from your whole demeanour and what you're saying here, is that um, you're getting your excuses in first now, aren't you? I'm sorry, I didn't quite You're getting that, your excuses in now. It doesn't... Uh, well, from your demeanour and the way you're going on about the, these, the disadvantages Mr Nuttall I, I, fa I, I, faced, many of his own I, I, making, uh, that it hasn't gone as well for you as you would have hoped? Well, um, I've fought many by-election campaigns, general election campaigns, European election campaigns since I helped set UKIP up in 1993, and this has been about the dirtiest campaign I've ever seen. That's all I can say on that. Really? Aren't by-elections usually pretty dirty? Most by-elections I've covered were pretty, have been pretty dirty. That's what by-elections are. 
Well, uh, this is this is maybe you've seen more than I have. Andrew, but I think that this <laughs> I is about have. the worst example that uh, I've actually but, about the worst example I've seen, and I've never experienced anything like this. But then I've never uh, in a, in, a, in a general election or by election, I've never come this close well, to winning. The, those of uh, us who remember, I think if a UK, those of us who remember and covered the Bermondsey by election many years ago in London are really shocked by nothing these days. Uh, but, but let me just ask you this before we go, because we're very grateful for your time, and I know it's difficult uh, it's right, when it's, the result is still unclear. But let me, if you cannot win in Stoke, which Mr. Nutto called Brexit Central, that this was one of the Brexit constituencies, if you can't win there, where can you win? Well, um, this, with all due respect to Stoke-on-Trent Central, it was number 72 on our target list. Uh, so uh, I think we've done very well, however we get on here. You know, in all the uh, um, UKIP elections I've taken part in, if we win, it's called a flash in the pan, and if we lose, it's the end of UKIP. Uh, so I, I won't be... I don't, the party has never been more united than it has in this campaign. We've had uh, hundreds of people out people have been solidly behind Paul working for a win. So uh, th this has actually brought the party together under, under okay. his leadership. So it's positive from us from that point of view, whatever the result is. And as I said right at the beginning, it's too early to call. We Indeed. could still be winning this. Uh, I understand. We'll see how United uh, yeah, UKIP you know, remains. We won't know for an hour or two yet. No, I understand I'm that. We'll be here until we get it. But we'll see how United UKIP remains uh, when we get the result. Okay. Uh, but thank you for joining us there. We may try and come back to you.